Hey, Amber Lagasse, whoa! Whoa! Well, thank you. Amber Lagasse, welcome, Amber Live. Hey, you know, today, go to the supermarket, the produce section is really changing. If you think about it, if you think about going five years ago, ten years ago, think about now, it's unbelievable, especially with all of the different types of Asian-style vegetables as well that's flooding the markets. So, I said to myself, self? Self? Yeah, I said something like that. <laughs> There's a lot of cute stuff out there. <laughs> what the heck do you do with it? So tonight, I'm going to show you how to use some of those amazing, amazing vegetables, those specialty produce, in your everyday cooking. Talk about amazing. Give it up for the amazing Doc Gibbs and the Amazon Band. All right. How you doing, boys? How you feel? Everybody all right? All right. We got Doc Gibbs and the Amazon Band. So it's Asian veggies with a little Western flair. You know where, right here on Emerald Live. Hi there. How are you? Welcome to the show. How you guys doing? All right? Hi. Smelling like a little vegetables over here, huh? Look at all these amazing, amazing stuff that you can get today in the produce section. It's just wonderful to see. One of the uh, couple of amazing things that we're going to do, sort of the hot chip, other than zaps. The hot chip right now, gourmet chips, are those taro root, right? little taro root chips. I'm going to show you how to make some of those. We also got lotus. That's another hot chip. So this is taro, and this is lotus. We're going to uh, talk about that, show you how to slice it on a mandolin, fry them up for some hot chips. <laughs> yeah. Hot chip, hot, hot. And then that frilly cabbage. I'm going to show you how to make a great, simple, sort of Asian-style coleslaw that we're going to do with some Chicken drumettes. I'm in the chicken drumette mood. Oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> and then, you know, it's not just snow peas anymore. But we're going to take our snow peas and turn them into a delicious shrimp salad. Show you that. And then, oh, yeah, babe. Bok choy. I like the name. Bok choy. We're going to take some bok choy and shiitake mushrooms and bok choy, <laughs> and some more bok choy, and we're going to do them with seared scallops. So, <laughs> this is a feisty group here we have tonight, Doc. Oh, yeah. Feisty is in the air. <laughs> Woo! New York. Yeah. It's good to be alive in New York, too. You no, know, that's right. Now, all right, taro, kind of hard sort of uh, related to the potato family. It's that tubular thing that is in the ground. And then lotus. The thing about lotus is this. Let me show you. I'm going to cut one of these. See the inside of it like that? It's got a kind of got this shape. Not very good to eat raw. Just a warning. I don't make this stuff up. <laughs> no, it's got some stuff in there. I don't know, the throat. I, I, I don't know. I'm, a, you know. I'm a cook, not a doctor. <laughs> but you peel both of them. And what we do is, after you peel them, we use this mandolin. Now, be very careful if you... And there are different types of mandolins. They're all stainless. They're this plastic outing. But what happens is the blade is like a very, very, very sharp knife used for a lot of different things, but particularly to slice potatoes thin for chips taro. When you get them, what we did is we got them nice and 
thin. And then what we want to do is we got them in water. But here's the big mistake when people try to do this at home. They don't let this dry enough. And so it completely starts to spitter and splatter and do all that stuff with the hot oil because oil and water don't mix. So what I tell people is that you should towel dry it before you try to stop frying it. And I'm going to show you something so simple, but what people don't do, and they make the mistake, and then they break down the oil, but more importantly, it's more of a safety thing, too. So you really want to sort of pat, pat it dry so that you can eliminate that water. Now, why do you soak them in water is because you don't want them to discolor while you're sort of working on this batch like this. Now, when you got them pat dry, we'll go to the little oil here and fry them up golden brown, a little at a time. So I'm going to start frying our lotus chips. When we come back, I'll show you what they look like. Stick around. We'll be right back. Doc Gibbs. <laughs> Look at all this beautiful stuff. Ikema, daikon. Look at all the wonderful produce. Bok choy, Chinese spinach. And then if you want to kick them up, you can add a few of these Thai chilies. Doc Gibbs and the MLI Band. Welcome back, everybody. Hey, we're cooking some Asian vegetables, Western style, with a feisty audience. Yeah. Feisty. Yeah. Feisty. Okay, so we've got our chips uh, brewing here. I got the second batch in. Folks, I try to tell people when they fry whatever they're going to fry, when it comes out of the hot oil, that's when you want to season it. Whatever you're going to season it with, even if it's just a little bit of salt and pepper, that's when it's going to sort of adhere, make it taste good. So we got our taro and lotus chips working here. Regular vegetable oil, about 350 degrees. Get them nice and golden brown. You know, one of the things about the lotus, that's that funky, holy thing there. If this is not fresh, it will turn color. It will turn a very dark color. That's when you know that the lotus is not fresh. If you're taking notes. <laughs> All right. Drain them real good. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm. Hey, those look better than them store ones, huh? <laughs> little salt. There you have it, folks. Little lotus taro chips, okay? All right, real simple. All right. I'm going to use a couple of different types of these, uh, they may seem foreign to you, kind of vegetables. Bean sprouts, love them. Should do more with them. They're good for you. Of course, good old carrot. And this is some daikon, just kind of like a radish. Do more things with radishes. Little green onions. Then I got some snow peas, and I just put them in some boiling water for about 15 seconds and took them out just to get them a little tender. And then I julienne them. Then. Whatever other kind of greens, there's so many out there right now. There's some uh, tot soy. This is really good stuff. There are different shoots available. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this sort of Chinese cabbage. Sometimes Some people call it Napa cabbage. 
but it's really delicious. And what we're going to do is we're going to take some of this and uh, we're going to shred it a little bit to make some slaw. So basically we're just going to, it's much more tender than regular cabbage. Okay? So we have some of that. <laughs> then we're going to uh, put this slaw together. What we're going to serve the slaw with is some chicken drumettes, because I'm in that kind of mode. You know those chicken drumette things? Oh, yeah. It's my portion here. <laughs> but I don't know where you get your drumettes. Where I get mine, they don't come seasoned. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to add a little bit of salt to that. Oh, it's happy already. Some essence. Oh, yeah, babe. And then we're going to add a little hot sauce to this, too. Nah, this is not that buffalo stuff either. Now, look happy to you? Watch how happy it'll be. So, oh, this is so happy right now. It's giggling. Now, you should let this kind of sit for an hour or two. Just put it in the ice box. Forget about it. Now, back to the slaw. We're going to take the Chinese cabbage or the Napa cabbage. We're going to add the bean sprouts to it. Carrots. Daikon. Snow peas. I love these dishes. You had like 17 ingredients. Dump them all in a bowl and season. <laughs> We're going to add some uh, herbs to that, green onions to that. I have a little cilantro, a little thyme. Now, that's all good and said and done and all that, but doesn't taste like anything. Well, we're going to change that. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to just sort of, using the tongs, we're just going to toss it so that it mixes properly. And now we're going to make a little dressing for this slaw, if you will. Unusual slaw, but it will be a tasty one. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a little mayonnaise. Watch what we're going to do to this mayonnaise. We're going to use some sriracha. That's sort of a hot sauce in Asian cooking. Or pimentum weather, if you're in the Portuguese cooking. Some honey. So we got hot, sweet. Hot, sweet. Little white wine vinegar. Now what we're going to do is whisk this. Break down the mayonnaise a little bit but it's not so thick, okay? Like if you're doing a regular coleslaw, you add like mayonnaise. Then what we're gonna do is just drizzle a little bit of olive oil. If you add the olive oil too fast, you're gonna break the dressing. So we're just gonna add a little bit of olive oil for the flavor. Too much olive oil in salad dressing, it'll take over. So just a little bit, mm. And then we're going to just now, oh, yeah, babe. Oh, yeah, babe. Now, a little salt. See, it's hard to get it all in there. You see, like that? Right? Hey, just go like that. <laughs> Works, OK? Some pepper. Now we're going to let that dressing, oh yes, 
See, it's not, it doesn't have to be wet like a big glump. Just lightly toss this. It's happy. Everything is cheering in here. It's just so unbelievable happy. So we got our slaw, right? See, it's not all soggy. All right, now, after you let those drumettes go for like about an hour or two, what happens is, see, is it absorbs that hot sauce. All the flavor's gone inside of those chicken things. Oh, take some flour, season the flour. I don't know where you get your flour. I get mine, it don't come seasoned. <laughs> then here's what you do. You take the drumettes. See, they're plump. They're full of hot sauce right now. Just happy. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take them in batches. You see that slur is saying, hey, chicken drumettes, come on over here. <laughs> and the drumettes are going, I'm full of hot sauce. I'm coming at you. <laughs> then you dredge them in flour like this. And then, about 350 degrees, we're going to start frying them. Yeah, you can do them in the oven, too. But hey, good frying is good frying. You with me so far? Yeah. Hey, guess what? When we come back, another notch! <laughs> Keyboards, ladies and gentlemen. We got Lewis on horns. Mr. Charles on the bass. We got Texas Teddy on drums. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Open up your hearts, feel the love, because Doc Gibbs is in the house. All right. Now, those chicken drumette things are drumming. <laughs> Got to do them in batches. Don't let them float. They'll be like sinkers. Like I told you earlier, too. They come out, season them up. Mm -hmm. They're vulnerable then. <laughs> Now, we're going to fry this last batch, and I'm going to show you exactly how we're going to plate them up. Had a question from somebody in the audience about snow peas. See, I just take a little bit of that wonderful slaw that we made. All right, a little more. <laughs> and take a few of those chicken drumettes like that right around. That's my portion right here. <laughs> and a little bit of uh, chive, a little bit of cilantro leaves. There you have it, folks. It's that simple, okay? I had somebody in the studio audience when we were on a commercial talk about snow peas and how do you prep them. So you want to just sort of take the ends off like that and then real quickly when you do that, just in and out. That simple. Right into ice water, which will shock them. All right, when we come back, we got a lot more surprises for you. Stick around. We'll be right back. Rock this.
feisty, the band's going to get feisty. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. If you're just joining us, Emeril Lagasse here. You fell off another planet. <laughs> Taking Asian veggies up a couple of notches, Western style. Little Asian slaw, them chicken drumettes. Make sure they're cooked, but don't overcook them. Enjoy, those of you out there now. I got some shrimp, or shrimps, and I uh, steamed them with a little bit of hot sauce, lemon juice. Oh, yes. Wow. Essence. Oh, yeah, babe. And uh, you don't want to overcook them. I got them nice, just, mmm. Papaya. This is the old regular papaya that you may see in the store. See how it's discoloring like that? That's because it's ripening. You can just touch it like that and feel. This is like how you want to get them. When they're green like this, oh, yeah, this is a papaya, too. <laughs> this is an island papaya. <laughs> yeah, that's another one. But you see how green it is? As it starts to get yellow like that, that's its ripening. It's just right. Cut it in half, take the seeds out, peel it. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> that's what I have here. I took the old big papaya, cut in half, took the seeds out. So, I thought what we would do, sliced it up. I thought maybe what we would do is just fan it out like this, some of that papaya. We'll just fan it out. <laughs> nice slices like that. Now, those snow peas that you asked what we uh, did with them, we blanched them, put them in the ice, took them out of the ice, and now we're just draining them. Little paper towel here to get the water. Nice and crunchy, delicious, sugary. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. So we have that. Let's make a little dressing. I've got some champagne vinegar. Ooh. A little bit of crushed red pepper. Let it dissolve in there for about 10 seconds. Let that pepper flavor, see it's releasing. <laughs> then we're gonna add some green onion, some ginger. Not Mary Ann, but ginger. <laughs> little garlic, oh yeah, babe. Pinch of sugar and a little lemon juice. So now I got all that in there. Sometimes you got to get the right tool for the job. See, small bowl, big whisk. <laughs> now, we're letting all that sort of get flavored, and then we're going to take some regular pomace oil, and we're going to make this into a vinaigrette. You with me so far? Oh, yeah, babe. Yeah, give me a little drizzle music there, Doc. Yeah, a little salad dressing, vinaigrette music. All right, so now we have the dressing in here. See that? Now... Here's what we're going to do. I've got this green leaf lettuce. I just kind of broke it up like this. So it's in sort of bite-sized pieces. Season it with a little salt. Mm -hmm. Some pepper. Now, I'm going to add a little bit of cilantro in here that I've chopped up some tot soy or watercress or whatever, little julienne red pepper. Now I'm going to take the shrimp. Matter of fact, I'm not only going to just take the shrimp, I'm going to take them snow peas too. You with me so far? <laughs> now nah, I got the snow peas, I got the shrimp in there, got that delicious ripe papaya. So now what we're going to do is take this vinaigrette Shh. 
Then we're going to toss this. Now we got a snow pea and shrimp salad. See that? With a little bit of that green leaf lettuce. Put that right on the old papaya slices like that. You know, that's a salad, you know what I mean? Just to finish it, take a little bit of crushed macadamia nuts. And there you have it, a little shrimp, snow pea salad. How's the chicken? How's the chicken? Good? Picked up enough? Picked up? Yeah, when we come back, another notch! Stock it! chicken, little shrimp, snow pea salad out there right now. This, uh, this next dish that I'm going to do, got my equipment set up here. I'm going to use um, bok choy. That would be this. That's how you find it in a grocery store. It's in that cabbage family. Really delicious if you cook it the right way really takes on a lot of great flavor. And I'm going to show you some flavors in a second. So I have that. You uh, get bok choy. What you want to do is you just sort of take the leaves off. And uh, you got to rinse it real good. It's kind of sandy. So we're going to use that. And we're going to use shiitake mushrooms, which is a cultivated mushroom, not a wild mushroom, which means that you can grow them in your backyard if you really want to. They're cultivated. The stems of these shiitake mushrooms are pretty tough, but they also have a lot of flavor. So I don't necessarily cook with the stem, but I save them, put them in a zip bag, stick them in the freezer, you got enough of them, and make a wonderful vegetable stock or a mushroom stock. Especially like if you cook risotto. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, then what we're gonna do is just uh, take them in julienne the shiitakes. These are really wonderful. Now, there was a question earlier about whether you can um, use these dry mushrooms, because shiitakes also are available dry. You can. You have to soak them in water, reconstitute them, probably strain them because maybe some of the sand. So we have the shiitake mushrooms. And then the bok choy, and I'm going to show you what we're going to do with that. After you clean up the bok choy, you can either leave it whole like this or chop it. And use this part of it too, not just the leaf part of it. And then basically now we're ready to cook it, give it some flavor. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a little bit of olive oil. Mm. Real quickly, what we're going to do is we're going to add some shallots or red onion, garlic, and some more ginger, and a little ginger. Now, when you do that, see what I'm doing? I'm working with it fast because you don't want it to burn. Most people, when they work with shallots or garlic like this in a hot skillet, it gets burned. And you don't want to do that. So now what we're going to do is add the bok choy in here. And we're going to immediately add a little salt. Mm -hmm. We're going to immediately kill the heat by adding a little bit of 
chicken broth. If you don't have any chicken broth, you can add a little bit of water. See, that stops the garlic shallot so it's not going to burn. What most people do is then they put the shallots and garlic in it and they add some stuff, whether it's pasta or whatever, and, and the garlic gets burned and then it gets bitter. And then it tastes not good. And you kind of embarrassed a little. <laughs> so, got that, see, it's not burned. We got the flavor out of there. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add also the shiitake mushrooms. Okay, you with me so far? <laughs> little bit of uh, fresh ground pepper. Why? Because it's fresh. <laughs> You know who you are out there, <laughs> right? You know, you got that red and white can in your pantry somewhere. You haven't opened it in about two years. You know who you are, you feisty group, you. All right, now, I uh, said earlier about ginger. Don't be afraid of ginger. Go to the supermarket. You don't have to buy all of this. You know, you can just buy a little toe like this of it. Peel it, chop it. That's what we're doing right here. Gonna add a little shallot and some ginger. See, look, you just take a piece. Then what you can do is you just take a paring knife. You just peel the outside bark the skin, if you will. So fragrant. That simple. Don't be afraid of it. Then we just cut it, or you can grate it, or you can just leave it like that. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of the juice of a lime and a little white wine. Why I'm doing that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why I'm doing that is because I want to flavor the liquid here. So we're going to let this sort of reduce, and then we're going to make it into a ginger butter sauce. So we've got this shiitake mushroom and bok choy sort of braising here. We've got this ginger sauce happening because I thought it would be perfect with scallops. Let me show you a trick. Skillet, stove. Don't be afraid to use your knob. See, medium, high. Use your knob every now and then. That's why I feel good every day. Show you another trick. When you get little scallops like this, little sea scallops, and you rinse them, clean them up, they shouldn't stink. <laughs> no, I get mad when that happens. I go to a store, I get stinky scallops. Hey, I asked the guy, I want to smell your fish. <laughs> they think I'm nuts. That's okay. Maybe I am. But let me show you a little trick. If you take a combination of olive oil, and a little butter. See, the smoking point of butter is very low. On itself, it will burn. But you want that flavor, at least I do. So, what also is gonna happen with the combination of this is that it's gonna make the scallops this beautiful golden color because of the fat in the butter, okay? So, if you wanna dredge them, great. If you don't, you're not gonna hurt my feeling little water, a uh, little flour like this, you see we dredge the scallops and we're gonna start cooking them. When we come back, I'm gonna show you how to finish the ginger sauce, put this whole sea scallop dish together. Stick around, we'll be right back. <laughs> Thank you.
All right, we got our bok choy shiitake mushrooms brazing away here. Reseason them, turn the heat down, just let them stay warm. Got the scallops here. Woo! Dredged in flour. Now we're gonna just turn them over. See that nice color that I was talking about with the butter? Huh? Shh, shh, don't tell anybody. They'll all be doing it. <laughs> we're gonna turn that scallops over now. You don't have to cook them to death. Jeez. They should be sweet. They should be sort of pale in the center. Get that scallop feeling. You with me so far? Now, see how that liquid is reduced? See that in the ginger? It's almost done. Just a little bit in there. Concentration. See, we got evaporation. Shh, concentration. All the flavors in there. Now we're ready to make it into a butter sauce. Why? Just add some butter in there. Somebody's got to help them poor dairy farmers. <laughs> Guys are working so hard out there. I'm with you, my brothers. <laughs> See how I got the pan off the heat? That's so that the sauce doesn't break. Slowly whisking in. It's still warm in here. Whisking in the butter. Oh, it's so happy right now. See? Presto. Butter's gone. Sauce is ready. Oh, if you want to strain it, strain it. If you don't want to strain it, you ain't going to hurt my feeling. Strain it like that. Turn the heat off. Now the sauce is ready. See that? We got a ginger butter sauce now. Now, mmm. Here's how I like to uh, sort of finish it up. Take the bok choy shiitake mushrooms, a little bit of that in the center like this. Then we take a little bit of that ginger butter sauce and we just kind of go around sort of like that. Right? Take a few scallops. That's a nice portion for me. <laughs> there you have it, folks, a little sea scallops. <laughs> now, if you wanted to sort of garnish that a little bit more, you could go back to your vegetable nest. Could use a little bit of green onion, maybe. We just kind of slice it, thin it like this. Maybe a little red pepper like that, and there you have it, folks, okay? Don't be afraid to use some unusual vegetables that are out there right now. I had a question earlier about what is this here. This is that daikon that we used earlier. That white in the slaw that we used. I said the daikon, that's that right there. Kind of tastes like radish, bok choy, tatsoi, snow peas, taro. There's so many wonderful things. It just doesn't have to be broccoli anymore. <laughs> Although I'm a big fan of broccoli. And you can see how easy, by just cooking it different ways and adding a few wonderful, interesting things, like ginger, like we did that ginger butter sauce with the scallops. Fantastic. I want to thank you all for joining me tonight, folks. I'm Emeril Lagasse. Guess what? See you tomorrow!